Hello, welcome to another episode of Levy's Customs. Today we're going to be taking a look at a gaming computer owned by a client of mine. I do work on computers on the side. I also do some photography, videography, event live streaming, and of course this YouTube channel on the side as well, so I'm pretty busy. Now, Doom Eternal, which came out last year, 2020, uh, is a pretty popular game. Something cool that the developers did was invite 20 uh, metal musicians uh, to record their vocals to use in the game. Why am I talking about this? Well, the computer that we're going to be looking at today is owned by one of those performers, and her name is Emma Little. She was a local musician here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and I've seen her bands many times. Now, I don't know too much about Emma, but she seems pretty cool and she's definitely a huge nerd. If anyone is interested in listening to any of her music, I'll go ahead and put links to Bandcamp down below. Anyways, the reason she brought her computer to me is because uh, water was spilled down the top of the uh, computer by accident and she just wanted me to figure out what had been damaged and what needed to be replaced. Thankfully, it was only her graphics card, which was a, an NVIDIA GTX 962 gigabyte. So let's go ahead and take a look at the specs. For the processor, we have an AMD FX 6300, which was a six core, six thread processor, but now is a three core, six thread processor due to a, a lawsuit that happened in 2019 against AMD. The graphics card I chose to replace the 960 that was in here, uh, I went ahead and, and got a, an NVIDIA GTX 1650 by MSI. Uh, the main reason is just because of budget. Uh, things are very expensive right now uh, for even older, weaker cards like this. Um, but I also got it because I felt like it wouldn't be bottlenecked by the processor. You kind of have to balance them out. We also have six gigabytes of DDR3 1333 megahertz memory. Uh, we also have two one terabyte hard drives, but for the sake of her privacy, uh, I'll just be putting in a 500 gigabyte SSD for the operating system and games. Now let's look at some benchmarks. Uh, just a reminder, all these benchmarks are done at 1080p uh, and at 100% resolution scale. I figured the addition of Doom Eternal to my benchmarking lineup would be appropriate for this video because Emma was a part of it. So let's take a look and see how it did. On the high preset, we got an average of 49.6 FPS and a low of 30.5 FPS. Doom Eternal ran all right, but I turned down the settings a notch as more intense scenes caused the game to slow down on a regular basis. Now, CSGO keeps giving me issues when trying to use MSI Afterburner, so I was unable to get the numbers for it, but using the Steam FPS counter in the top left corner, shows it really never dipped below 60 FPS and it runs pretty well on high settings. I have since then figured out what the issue is with MSI Afterburner, so hopefully we won't have any more issues with this. Far Cry on the high preset got us an average of 48.1 FPS and a 1% low of 16.2 FPS. Far Cry ran all right, but medium settings may be better for this title. GTA 5 on high settings got us an average of 61.6 FPS and a 1% low of 42.4 FPS. GTA ran pretty well, but I was hoping for a little more consistent frames. Red Dead Redemption 2 on the first tier of the balanced preset and the texture quality set to high, we got an average of 51.6 FPS and a 1% low of 31.5 FPS. Red Dead ran pretty well considering the hardware on this computer. 
Resident Evil 3 on the balanced preset got an average of 83.9 FPS and a 1% low of 46.7 FPS. This game ran very smoothly and probably could have ran at a higher graphical setting. Shadow of the Tomb Raider on the medium preset got an average of 61.3 frames per second and a 1% low of 39.2 frames per second. This game also ran really smooth with the exception of one of the town areas where it, it did drop down into the low 30s and upper 20s. Star Wars Squadrons on the medium preset netted an average of 105.8 FPS and a 1% low of 43.6 FPS. Squadrons ran very well and I could have cranked up the graphics a bit more. Rainbow Six Siege on the high preset got an average of 109.4 frames per second and a 1% low of 72.9 frames per second. Siege was smooth to play and I never saw the frame rate drop below 60 FPS. Fortnite on the medium settings got an average of 104.4 FPS and a 1% low of 33.5 FPS. Fortnite ran alright, but suffered from frequent stuttering and choppy gameplay. Metro Exodus on the medium preset got an average of 69.2 FPS and a 1% low of 31.9 FPS. Metro ran a bit better than I expected, but still suffered from some stutters. Overwatch on the medium preset got an average of 109.4 frames per second and a 1% low of 16 frames per second. I'm not sure what happened with the 1% low as I did not notice many stutters. The game seemed like it ran well to me. Warzone on the lowest settings got an average of 55 point. I was hoping this game would have run better, but the average frame rate is close to 60. With Cinebench R20, the multi core score we got averaged 838 points, and the single core score average was 198. The multi core score isn't terrible, but the single core score is definitely low. The Blender Classroom Render completed in 56 minutes and 10 seconds, which is pretty slow. So I benchmarked this computer before Cyberpunk 2077 was out. Uh, so it's not gonna be in this video, but our future videos should have uh, benchmarks for Cyberpunk in it. Looking at the MSI Afterburner information on some of this gameplay footage, I felt like my choice of getting a 1650 in here um, was a good choice. Uh, some games the GPU was the bottleneck, some games the CPU was, some they were nice and balanced. Uh, so I feel like this was a good match. I was also very happy with the performance of this computer. Uh, replacing the 960 with the 1650, uh, I think it makes a really great budget gaming computer. It was able to play the majority of these games on medium settings at 60 plus frames a second. She could also replace the CPU in this computer with an AMD FX 8350 just to get a little bit more performance. I've seen them on eBay go for under $100. One thing I would highly recommend is getting eight gigabytes of RAM instead of the six that's in here. Uh, I feel that eight gigabytes is the minimum nowadays for gaming and even just productivity and stuff. On a few games, I noticed that the CPU and GPU weren't running at 100%, meaning there's a bottleneck or something somewhere. And when I looked at the memory usage, uh, in MSI Afterburner, I noticed that on some of these games, the memory was maxing out, and so I'm wondering if the RAM was bottlenecking performance. For me, eight gigabytes is the minimum 
if you're wanting to play video games and it's honestly starting to look closer to 16 now. Uh, I did a test with uh, a gaming laptop a while back and adding, going from eight to 16 gigabytes, some games saw performance uplifts of more than 40%. So what do you guys think about this build? Let me know down in the comments. And with that, I will leave you and I'll see you in the next one.